so a lot of people have been asking me to do a CO2 video for a very long time and I've put it off mostly because I don't use CO2 that often but I happen to be setting up CO2 today anyway and so I've got the parts available. The first thing you're going to need is a regulator. This is a used one, this is an Aquatech one. They're cheap, uh, you can buy them on Amazon, you can buy them at my store usually. Um, they work, they're dual gauge. So in theory what that's gonna do is help it from gassing off. And what that means, if you ever read about that, is when the tank gets low and gets to a certain low pressure, it just releases the rest of it. And that usually only happens when you have a one gauge uh, system. So it's not dual stage, one stage. Uh, so yeah, but basically what you've got, you've got two gauges. One's gonna tell you how much pressure is in the tank, so how much gas is left. And then one is gonna tell you how much pressure is gonna go through that line. And this is the knob right here to adjust it. So if it was way out, there's gonna be almost no pressure going through. And if you cranked it really, really far down, it'd be letting out a ton of pressure. And that's the problem, right? So here we've got a CO2 tank. This one's made out of steel. Most times you're gonna see them made out of aluminum. Uh, I go for steel because they're a little bit cheaper because I so seldomly ever move this. Now, CO2 tanks, they have to get recertified every X amount of years. I don't know, I just buy it from either a fire extinguisher place or like a welding place. And this is a 10 pound cylinder. A five pound cylinder is just slightly narrower. So I would always advise go with a 10 pound cylinder and then the steel was like, 30% cheaper, and yeah, it weighs a little bit more, but it's still easy enough to move around, and the 10-pound cylinder will still fit under a normal aquarium stand, whereas like the 20-pound one you see on like a, uh, a soda machine would not. Now, the other thing when we're talking about the cylinder, you have to make sure they're upright. If they lay down, they'll let liquid out, and so you can't do that. It's gotta be standing up, and the reason why we put on a regulator is because if we just open this, it lets out way too much CO2 too fast. Like that obviously would drain in like a minute, right? So we have to put the regulator, and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna regulate the pressure so that it comes out one bubble at a time as opposed to all that we just let out. Now, when it comes to hooking up your regulator to your CO2 tank, a couple of things. First, let it get to room temperature. So a lot of times you're gonna go to like a central welding or something like that and you're gonna swap the tank. And they're gonna go grab one outside, they're gonna hand it to you, you're gonna drive home, you get home, and you wanna set it up. Well, if the metal's really hot or really cold, it's gonna expand or contract. And so, we'll tighten this regulator on there, and we'll get it on super tight, but then tomorrow we'll come in and we'll have no CO2 left because when it got to the right temperature, the threads changed, and all of a sudden this is really loose. And so you gotta let it acclimate to the temperature of the room. I do it for at least three or four hours. I don't know what the soonest time is, but you know, do it earlier in the day, go do all your errands, eat dinner, then come back and do this project. And uh, so then we need to mate up the regulator to the, uh, the CO2 bottle, essentially. When you get it filled, you're gonna get a little wafer, basically. It's a composite wafer. What does that mean? That means it's made out of a bunch of different materials. It works fine when you're letting out a lot. So for instance, what that means is if you put this on, you put a regulator on, you're gonna go weld, it's letting out so much CO2. Well, you wouldn't use CO2, but they don't know that. Uh, it's letting out so much that it wouldn't put that much strain on this seal, so it works just fine. But in our application, we're gonna let out so little CO2 that a lot of times these are problematic. And so, if you're gonna do this, a lot of times the regulators will come with a nylon one, which is just plastic, or hopefully you get to go with the super duper ones that I love, and that's this one right here. It's a rubber seal, it's called a, a perma seal is what they call it, and it's what they use at central welding and those kinds of places, and I'm told you can buy them at like brewing stores, like a beer brewing place. Uh, I bought mine from, uh, what is it, greenleafaquariums.com for six bucks or something like that. And these screw onto the inside. So you have to make sure when you do get them to swap yours out, you get some that have threads in it. And they just screw right in, just like that. And now you've got this rubber gasket to seal to, which works really good. Uh, that's the last one thing I wanna mention. When you do get your tank swapped out, most places wanna swap your tank, they don't wanna fill it. So people go, well, I'm gonna buy this 
you know, aluminum tank looks amazing on Amazon, and then you go to get it filled, they're like, no, 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 we only swap here. So instantly, you're gonna get a used tank, and that's just the way it usually goes. Some places will do it, but you know, have that in the back of your mind that not everyone's gonna fill it for you. They just wanna swap. They're meant to swap hundreds of these a day. So, we need to uh, hook our regulator up. This regulator also has a solenoid on it. What does that mean? That means we have a plug-in. And if we were to plug this in, when it has power, it will let CO2 out. When it doesn't have power, it won't. So we get to plug this into our lighting timer, and when the lights are on, it'll allow CO2 to flow. When lights are off, it will not. And that's good because plants can only utilize CO2 when it has light. So the first thing you wanna do is, you know, kind of make this up a little bit and get it so that it, you know, goes right where that rubber grommet's gonna be. And then you're gonna slide this nut onto here. And if you, you need to hold it. If you just let it do it itself, it's really hard to turn, right? So you have to hold it level. And you get it basically finger tight. And I always have it looking up at me a little bit. So then I can grab a crescent wrench. And this is a tool I recommend if you use like vice grips or pliers, you're gonna mar this up a whole bunch. But you just get it on there and then you kind of hold it a little bit and tighten it down. And you don't gotta crank it on crazy tight, but don't leave it way loose either. Like you don't wanna just like, you know, put all your weight on it, but definitely, you know, make it be pretty snug. Uh, so the last part of this assembly, down here we have what's called the needle valve. And a needle valve is a very fine adjustment valve. So you might have to turn it five times to get it to do five bubbles per second as opposed to one bubble per second. Whereas like this, this adjustment might be the difference between 500 and 50, you know? So 50, and then you crank it down, that's 500. So this is the operating pressure. So we've got CO2 in here. We're gonna regulate how it comes out. And so we can do this right here. So we're gonna open this valve. We're gonna watch these gauges move. So we can see here, we have about 1,000 PSI inside the tank. That means it's a full tank. And as that gets lower, you'll know we're getting closer to needing to refill it. A 10 gallon tank on maybe, or a 10 pound tank on a 75 gallon tank might last you two years, depending on how much CO2 you're putting in. So pretty inexpensive, costs you 15 to 20 bucks to refill one. And then over here, we have the operating pressure. And you can, you can crank this up a whole bunch. But the problem is, like if I keep this at 100, it's gonna blow off the diffuser. It's literally just gonna go boom. So we need to keep, oper I usually run operating pressure down around 40 or so, which I might have to let some of this out for it to, yeah, so now that I cranked it up, I have to actually add power to it for it to go back down. But I like to run at about 40 PSI. Uh, some of these regulators, not by Aquatech, but some will be uh, set so that they're always set at 30 or always set at 40, especially the single stage ones. That's why they don't include it, you can't adjust it. But Pretty much anything will work as long as it's not crazy too high. So then, with this application, this is silicone tubing, and uh, it is not specific to CO2. Now there is CO2 tubing, but I don't notice any loss. People go, oh God, you're losing all kinds of CO2. Yeah, okay, so maybe I have to replace this every two years, and I might have been able to replace it every two years and one month. So I might have got one more month wasted a little bit less CO2, uh, but this stuff is like, you know, 20, 30 cents a foot. CO2 tubing is a lot more rigid and it doesn't work as well. Uh, this application, since we're gonna be above the sump that I'm installing it, I don't have to do this step, but I recommend doing a check valve. And yes, I just use a normal plastic one. Typically I get 10 plus years without it failing. You could buy an expensive brass one and maybe it's gonna last you the rest of your life, but for you know, two or three bucks, and it lasting 10 years, I think that's pretty good. I'm much more likely to break this thing or sell it or get rid of it, something like that before this ever gives way on me. The goal with the check valve is that it would be right at your water line. So if we're doing this sump, it would be right here, so that water would only ever come back to here, where if I had it on, let's say this tank over here, if I had it on this tank, and we didn't put the check valve at the water line, Instead, we put it all the way down here. When the power goes out, which is gonna be every night when the light goes out, water's gonna fill this tube. 
then the pressure would have to build up and it might take an hour before it finally gets all the water back out of the tube. And the first hour every day, there'd be no CO2 in the system. So simply put it relatively close to the top, prevent as much water as you can from coming back into it and you'll be a lot happier. So now we've got a way to at least get it so we won't flood this. And the last thing that I use is a CO2 diffuser. Now this just goes right on the end. And this is a real simple one. You can get reactors and stuff like that. We'll talk about that in a minute. But all we're gonna do is we're gonna put that on the end. I'm actually gonna cut this because we had it on a different CO2 diffuser. I'm gonna cut and make sure it's a snug fit. But fine mists of CO2 are gonna come out of this and that's what's gonna add CO2 to our system. Now, is a reactor more efficient? Yes, but it comes back to that, how much more efficient? Maybe this lasts me two years with this and with the reactor, I get two years and two months. And so you're going, well, yeah, you're gonna save a ton of money. Like, yeah, I might save about $4 or $2 a year, basically. I save $2 a year, meanwhile, a reactor might cost you 60 bucks. So you're never going to get that benefit out. Now, a reactor makes sense if you can't get enough CO2 into the water somehow. Let's say you got a 10,000 gallon aquarium and you really just need to be really efficient with it. That might make some sense, but for me, uh, it doesn't. And typically, I don't even use a diffuser. I literally let it run to the intake of my canister filter or my hang on back filter. It just sucks it up in, hits the impeller, spits it back out, and it works really well. That's how all my tanks in the store are working. For right now, since I don't have any hang on backs on this system or canister filters, I'm going to do it this way and I wanted to make the video. So there's, that's the reason I got it out of the package. So now what I got to do, I'm going to grab some scissors, I'm going to cut this, we're going to get this plugged in and hopefully I'll be able to show you, look at that, we got CO2 coming out. So give me a moment. So for demonstration purposes, I'm going to put it in this tank, even though I know it's going to go down in the sump when I'm done with it, but you guys aren't going to be able to see it very well in the sump. So I just stick this to the side of the aquarium. Nothing's going on so far because we haven't given it power yet. We've got to give it some power. It's not going to be hooked up to the timer yet because I've got to do that still. But I'm going to plug it in right now. And if, if you're crazy quiet and we get really close, we're going to hear a ting sound. It's going to go ting. And that's that valve opening up. And it's not easy to hear because we've got some water going right here. But you hear that click? That click is it opening the valve the solenoid itself. Uh, so we're gonna, it's gonna take pressure to build up. And you can see here my pressure is dropping because we, uh, we've got it set low. I like to run it about 40. It's still dropping, dropping, dropping. And we'll see where it goes because now it's starting to let that CO2 out so the pressure isn't built up. And once, yeah, you know, it looks like it's gonna be about 40, maybe 50, that'd be fine. Uh, but I could show you and, you know, if I was to crank that up, it's just going to blow that right off the end. And that's not what we want to do. And I believe right now we have the CO2 completely turned off. And so when you hook up CO2 to a system, you know, for most people, this is the way it goes. They go, I don't have CO2. I heard it's magical. I'm going to spend a bunch of money and I'm going to install CO2. And I want as much CO2 as I can get today. And you, it's really easy to go way too much and gas your fish. So go from I have no CO2 to hopefully tomorrow I have a tiny little bit. So, you know, if you have a system and your buddy has a system and he runs seven bubbles per second, your goal tomorrow is to have like one bubble per second maybe, but not five, like take it really slow. So if I open this up a ton, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it so that hopefully it'll start flowing pretty fast up there just so we can do it for video. It's gonna take a minute to pressurize this whole line. So we just have to wait Hopefully it doesn't just pop off the end, because normally you let it slowly acclimate. Pressurize the whole line. And it takes a little while, because we're going, you know, literally like bubbles at a time. It's not like a, you know, fire hose we got going here. So it can take a little while. And I recommend maybe making one adjustment per day. Once you've got some CO2 coming out, don't make an adjustment, then an hour later make another adjustment, then an hour later make another adjustment. Like let it build up the entire day and evaluate are my plants starting to pearl? Are my fish gasping? Those types of things instead of trying to dial it in within 24 hours. So now what we can do is really wait. All right, so it's been a couple of days. We had to go out of town, but the CO2 diffuser itself, usually you want to let them soak. And I wasn't getting good action to show you guys. 
until it's soaked. So now I've got it turned up quite a bit because we're doing a lot of CO2 for, you know, basically about a thousand gallons of water here. Uh, but you can see all the fine bubbles coming out of it. And we're actually going to put it so it's more in this uh, so we can really get good uh, diffusion going through the entire thing. Now, I wouldn't normally necessarily do that if I was at home, but on such a big system that makes some sense for us. But yeah, once you got the diffuser going and you can get basically all the plants starting to purl, which we've already got going on, you can see here all the plants are nice and happy in the plant racks. And you know, as I kind of go through, you see lots of plants releasing oxygen. That's because they're converting all that CO2 and growing. And uh, yeah, so it worked out well. So yeah, that's how I do CO2, works out pretty well. And uh, let us know if you have any questions in the comments.